from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, bringing you data-driven insights from the Cube and ETR. This is Breaking Analysis with Dave Vellante. Data from recent surveys shows that the scenarios that we've been putting forth throughout 2024 continue to be in play. Specifically, we cite three main dynamics affecting the technology market, including IT budgets, they continue to be constrained, as two, Gen AI is being funded by stealing from other funded buckets, and three, the ROI for AI initiatives, they re it remains tepid as expectations for break-even continue to be pushed out to the right. Nonetheless, customers remain highly optimistic about the prospects for AI driving productivity improvements, and of course, the cloud remains a key ingredient in supporting AI workloads. Hello, and welcome to this week's The Cube Research Insights, powered by ETR. And this breaking analysis will update you on the macro spending picture in IT, and we'll revisit the Gen AI impact on that spending with some fresh survey data from ETR. We'll also examine customer expectations around cloud workload allocation, and specifically look at the cloud and its role in supporting AI initiatives. In this first chart, we revisit uh, the spending data, the macro spending data from this uh, latest survey, 1,729 IT decision makers. If you go all the way back to the COVID era, we exited COVID with a very optimistic 7.5% increase in IT spending. Huh. Those were the days. And then Ukraine, Fed tightening, over capacity, uh, it, within IT, confusion about AI, et cetera, caused expectations. So this is annual expectations for IT budget growth. And you can see all the way down through 2022 and it bottomed at 2.9%, right around the time the Fed stopped tightening. And now we see the reversal coming into 2024. But that reversal was backloaded. We can see here people uh, earlier in this year, IT decision makers expected a 4.3% increase for the year. That actually dropped and then bumped down to 3.4%, bumped up to 3.7% in um, the last survey, in the summer survey. It's back down now to 3.4%. So 3.4% is the current expectation of this sample, which is a fairly large sample. Global 2000, even worse. They're at 2.5%, which is below recent GDP forecasts, many of them anyway, but there's an optimistic outlook for 2024. We, we've we seen this pattern before. We saw this, you know, coming into this year. Uh, the previous year uh, was lower than the expectations for this year, but we've seen them come down. And, you know, part of that is that AI is still not self-funding. And, you know, we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail, but let's take a look at the next data point that shows us how people are thinking, those 351, uh, that subset, what's the primary method that the organization is using to achieve a decrease in IT spending uh, this year versus last year? And you can see that controlling headcount and delaying projects, pushing projects are the top two methods to defer costs. Um, but vendor consolidation has really popped up here. You can see it was you know, 10% in the April 2024 survey, so it was fairly benign. Now it's up to you know mid single digits, uh, mid to mid teens rather. Um, so that's we think a significant change and and something that we should be watching. Now, while vendor consolidation is a goal, as we've reported, uh, particularly in the cybersecurity sector, which is very very crowded, it's difficult for uh, organizations to consolidate those vendors. You might recall prior to RSA uh, with uh, e ETR ran a flash survey that showed only 9% of the customers in that survey, it was about, I can't remember, but several hundred, maybe six to 900, something like that. Only about 9% were successfully reducing their vendor headcount uh, or their vendor uh, stack count for the number of tools. Uh, so we're seeing an increase there continuing despite many companies you know, focusing on the consolidation play. All right, let's move on to the next chart and here, you know, is one of the factors that is affecting the overall macro. Again, 1,700 plus IT decision makers. Did your organization reallocate budget from any of the following areas for its Gen AI budget? 
And we said here, you can see in red, at least 44% of the respondents indicate that Gen AI is funded by stealing from other budgets. We've seen that number hover around 40 or even 42%. And it, it pops up to at least 55% in the global 2000. Now, the way we can, the reason why we say at least is because we took the none of the above and the I'm not sure's and, and sort of added those together. So it could actually be worse. In other words, if we just subtracted the 39% from 100, it would be 61% would be stealing. But we try to give it the benefit of the doubt and saying, okay, the I'm not sure's, let's say, aren't stealing from the budget. Maybe they, may, they mean they're not, they don't know which budget it's coming from. So that's why we say at least. But the other really interesting new data point here is that, and we shared this with you last week, um, the lines of business are contributing to that Gen AI pot. You can see business applications at 13%, non-IT departments, 12%. Outsource services at at twelve uh, percent, and then um, marketing, the marketing department at eight percent. So, so these 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 uh, uh, budgets are coming from other places, and particularly the line of business. Now, when you look at the AI budgets in this next chart, we show how much does your organization actually anticipate spending this year on Gen AI, and you can see. The, the number one response, 33% of the 1,700, say less than 100 grand. Now, it's interesting because you do have some big spenders out to the right, at, you know, two and a half to five million, five to 10 million, you know, they're, they're out there. Uh, and as we'll show in a moment, they skew the data. But, you know, generally, I, IT budgets are, are relatively small. Um, now, before we get into that, let's take a look at some of the the, the data in cloud. So this shows, this next data shows the the the, the repatriation index, if you will. Um, it, it's sort of the inverse of that. What will be your company's usage between public and private cloud for the following timeframes? And you can see there, there are three lines, October 2022, August is, is the gray, uh, August 2023 is the blue, and then the yellow is the latest survey, which was done in August of 2024. So pretty fresh data. And you can see it just continues to improve. Now, this is a sample of only 298, but still, a sample of 300 is still, you know, meaningful. Uh, but, but you, you know, look, there is definitely some repatriation going on. Anecdotally, when you talk to customers, they definitely complain about cost. Um, but nonetheless, it just doesn't show up in the macro numbers. Now, if you take a look at the next slide, you'll see uh, that, when we look at the proportion of the company's total cloud spend that is being spent on AI resources, it's kind of interesting. And again, pay attention to the N here. Um, it's, it's much smaller than the other ones, but this shows the distribution. So the gray is the median, the blue is the mean. And look at how the big AI spenders are skewing the average here. So you can see, um, for instance, if you look at uh, the proportion that is spending zero to nine percent, so less than ten percent, <laughs> the median, which is the midpoint, is forty-five percent. The mean, think of that as the average, goes down to nine percent. And so you can see, as you get to the outer, to the to the rightmost portions of this chart, the twenty to twenty-nine percent pops up to eighteen percent. So the blue then takes over, and the thirty to thirty-nine percent, et cetera the blue or the mean takes over from the gray. And so if you go all the way to the far right, you can see today the median or midpoint is 10%. The, the mean is 18%. And that grows to 34%, 26 and 34% respectively in three years. Now, if you think about that and you think about the, the amount of money, the hundreds of billions that is being spent on AI right now, and you compare that to the, to the cloud revenue, you know, let's take the big four cloud revenue off the top of my head is about $200 billion. And let's say it's going to grow within three years to about $300 billion. If only a third of that is really going toward AI, you know, you're talking about, you know, big, big numbers, $100 billion, but it pales into comparis with, in comparison to what's going to be spent in that time frame. Now, the caution I would say is that a lot of that spend is going to be on embedded AI inside of infrastructure, inside of software, you know, buried inside of, you know, of all kinds of automation tools. So you have to be a little bit careful in interpreting that data, but nonetheless, uh, we would like to see 
a little bit bigger numbers as it relates to that AI ROI. Sorry. So I know this is abbreviated uh, uh, breaking analysis. Had to record here midweek uh, for some from some personal reasons. But let's go to the final slide. Things to watch in Q4 and beyond. And I'll take you through this. We have a lot of stuff going on this year. We got the election. Uh, we got at least two hot wars going on, um, potentially three. Uh, you got the dock worker strike, which could affect uh, all kinds of things, could, could affect inflation again, and that might affect the Fed's actions. So uh, obviously these are things that are out of our control, but they're definitely things to watch. AI ROI, I like to say it's hitting singles, okay? We're, we're not seeing the big giant ROIs um, or I should say even NPVs, net present value. You know, a lot of people get confused around um, ROI. They throw that term around. In fact, it's probably worth talking about it a little bit. Um, so when you think about um, ROI is the percent return on an investment. So think of ROI as, as a very simple calculation. It's it, the, the ROI is, is benefit over cost, okay? So if you can lower the cost, that's why so many CFOs want to lower the cost because it increases their return, but it's just a percentage. It doesn't give you any indication of the, the size of that return. That's what we like to call, or we call NBV, net present value, when you do a discounted cash flow. So you know, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a 1,000% ROI uh, on 100 bucks, or would you rather have a 2% ROI on a billion dollars, you know, think Warren Buffett. Hmm. In this case, it's maybe 10 billion or 20 billion. Okay, but so you see the difference. Big numbers, small returns are oftentimes to companies better than what? big percentage returns on smaller numbers. And then there's the break even. Break even is the time at which, after you put in all the resources to get the project started and you make the initial investment, how long does it take? To get your money back, what is that crossover? So that's a little, you know, you know th thirty second tutorial on ROI. Okay, let's go back to the chart, and uh, or the, the the slide. So the other point, point number three, are again to that crossover point. Expectations for break even, because that's how I really interpret this ETR data. It's w w when they say ROI, ROI is really a percentage, and the break even is really a time frame. So you know the way the questions asked, they're sort of conflating. Um, the concept, but we get it. it. Really, you know, when you talk about time getting stretched out past 12 months, which is what the data shows, we're really talking about the break-even time. You know, the fourth point here, we've been talking a lot about agentic models um, and in AI going beyond a single agent or a single co-pilots. And, you know, initial agentic models that we're seeing, we saw a lot of this at uh, Dreamforce. Uh, we're going to see more at Microsoft Ignite. I'm hoping that we see more at uh, AWS reInvent. The initial models along with low code are gonna accelerate that payback period uh, with increased productivity and, 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 and better processes with existing processes. Sometimes we talk about paving the cow path. It's sort of a pejorative, but if we apply AI to existing processes, that is going to make things better. It's a, it's a good turn of the crank, but it's not going to give you, if you go to the last point on this slide, that 10x productivity improvement that David Floyer is talking about. So longer term, these mature multi-agent systems that we've been talking about that have a harmonization layer that can, that can connect to back-end um, legacy applications that, remember, control, that they contain a lot of the data, the metadata, the business logic, if you can connect to those and have two-way interaction between the agents and that harmonization layer pushing back into those back-end systems and in real time looking at the digital representation of the business, and very importantly, an agent control framework that can enable these agents to be governed, to work together in concert, and very importantly, interpret top-down goals top-down metrics and organizational objectives to execute on a bottoms-up capability. Now, it's important to remember that this is going to take a long time. This is years away before we reach this nirvana. So in the meantime, we're going to see 
you know, an S curve emerge, and you know what those look like. It takes a while to get things going. And we're in the flat part of the S curve. You know, some people call it the, I guess Gartner calls it the trough of disillusionment or whatever. But really, they're talking about S curves. Really haven't hit, you know, we're excited, but we really haven't hit the steep part of the curve. And then when you hit the steep part of the, the curve, for very little effort, you get a big, big return. And that's when everybody gets re-excited, reignited. Um, and so we really think that that agentic a, f a framework that we've been putting forth as as great potential, and that's something that we are really going to keep doubling down on. So, what do you think? What are you seeing for spending? What are you seeing in terms of AI stealing from other budgets? What are you seeing for returns on an, on the AI investments? Let us know. All right, that's it for now. Thanks to Alex Myerson and Ken Schiffman on production. They also do our podcasts. Kristen Martin and Cheryl Knight help get the word out on social media and our new newsletters. And Rob Hof is our editor-in-chief over at siliconangle.com. That's where you get all the news. Remember, all these episodes are available as podcasts wherever you listen. Just search Breaking Analysis Podcast. I publish each week religiously. This is the 250th Breaking Analysis. Published each week on thecuberesearch.com and siliconangle.com. You can email me at david.vellante at siliconangle.com or DM me at dvellante or comment on our LinkedIn posts. And please do check out etr.ai for the best survey data and the enterprise tech business. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube Research Insights powered by ETR. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Breaking Analysis.